Okay guys, welcome to today's video where we're going to swap the immobilizer data on one of these little VW uh, ECMs. Uh, they're used in multiple different vehicles or not just, this one's out of a Beetle, um, but there's a couple of different ones that are exactly the same look as this. They got different part numbers on uh, a few of them, but uh, pretty much the same procedure. But this one is a 06 Alpha 906032 Charlie. Um, so that's that's the PCM I got right here that I'm going to be doing the swap to. And all what we have to do is swap this EEPROM over right here. And the tools you're going to need to do this is a hot air station, a soldering station, some flux, and you're going to need a, was this a T15 to uh, get the screws off. Once you get the screws off, it is got, it's got this adhesive in here to kind of watertight seal it. A little bit hard to get off. Uh, the stuff's not a solid RTV uh, kind of thing. It is still kind of goopy. So you don't have to replace it when you put it back up together. You just leave the same goop in there and uh, it, uh, it'll it seal back up. So the reason why I'm doing this is the number two injector has a misfire on this PCM. Uh, so I got an eBay PCM to replace it, or sorry, these are ECMs. Um, so I got a eBay one for 50 bucks to replace it instead of going through the effort to repair it. The mechanic that brought this to me, uh, he had sent it to another guy three times uh, that put these uh, warranty void stickers, which I ranted about recently in, a, uh, in another video. Um, but yeah, so they, they worked on it three times and couldn't get it to work. Um, and they replaced at least it appears that they had replaced the part that I would replace. Uh, so there's this IC right here. Um, I, I hate doing that. I hate replacing stuff instead of fixing it. But this was one of those instances where it was just not economically feasible for me to repair it. It had been a couple of hundred dollars for me to repair it and I can replace it for 50. So let's just replace it. So that's what I'm going to show you guys how to do today is how to replace it. Um, uh, if they hadn't already worked the areas that I would have thought were the problem, I, I would have thought it would have been a good video to try to repair repair this one. Uh, but I, I don't know. I, I just, I don't see it being worth the effort. I don't have the part on hand. I'd have to order it and there's no telling if it really would fix it. So we're just, we're just going to replace it. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoy the video. I'm going to show you two different techniques for replacing it. One is using the hot air station to install it with solder paste. And the other is going to be using traditional solder and just a soldering iron. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's get right into this. Okay. So here we have our two PCMs. We have the uh, original one and the new one, same part number. Uh, so all that we're going to do here is swap these EEPROMs, uh, on them. So what you have on here is you have one EEPROM and one flash ROM. Um, so this um, th this flash memory here uh, will contain the tune and everything for the uh, microcontroller. So if you were to swap the uh, the EEPROM, because this, this has the immobilizer data on it, so that's why we have to swap it is to get that immobilizer to not uh, immobilize the vehicle. So we swap these over to, to keep that from happening. And if we were to put it in the car and it still have issues running, uh, you may have to, uh, swap over your flash also, uh, or you can read it. It is just a, um, it's the, um, a AMD one. That's pretty, it pretty common from this era from the early 2000s. Yeah. The, um, that the AM 29 F, 400BB. Uh, I believe you also see these in some of the GM PCMs. And then this is an Infineon chip, uh, Siemens, because it's uh, before Infineon uh, bought out the Siemens Electronics division. Uh, I think the other one actually says Infineon on it. Yeah, this one says Infineon uh, and should have the same flash module, even though the Intel one works the same. Yep, same AMD flash module on here. Uh, the, the, uh, Intel one could, uh, you could use it in its place. There, there are some small, uh, differences in the two of them, but they, they will work. Uh, they work pretty much the same. All right. So, um, yeah, so let's get this, uh, EEPROM off of here. I'm just putting them back on the housing just because it's easier. One thing to be aware of. So we're going to use hot air 
it's not a problem with this one. Something to be aware of when you're working with hot air on a circuit board that has components on both sides is make sure there's not any small little passives uh, on the other side that may fall off. Just, you know, something to keep an eye out for. You shouldn't be putting that much hot air for that long that passives will fall off the other side. Um, so just something to keep an eye out for those. Just make sure you don't lose uh, any little components here. So we're going to take take both of these off. Um, there is a little bit of conformal coating on this board, but it is the wax based stuff. So uh, a little isopropyl alcohol or flux remover um, and a sponge or a paper towel, take it off. And so you can see it's kind of turned it brown because it's taken that conformal coating off. It's just like a wax on there now. Um, it almost looks like there's flux all over the board, but it's not flux. It's the, the conformal coating that they use. So um, yeah, let's just, we're gonna use the hot air station to, to get these off. Um, since I have two of them, I'm gonna show two different uh, techniques for putting them back on, but really hot air is the best way to take them off. Just a little flux. And now for some hot air. All right, so you may have noticed you may have noticed that when I took it off, I couldn't just jiggle it to see if it was free from the board and I was uh, pushing on the solder on the pad to see if it was free. It's because these are glued to the board. It's for the pick and place machine when they build them in the factory. That's not something that they're doing to make repair more difficult or anything. Uh, they, they just glue them on there for the pick and place machine. So when they put all the components on there and then run it through the reflow oven, uh, or wave solder. I, I don't know what technique they use on this. I would assume a um, uh, this would have been done in a reflow oven, though. Uh, so yeah, they they just glue all the little components down uh, and then flow it. So yeah, not sure what techniques used on these, but I'm gonna assume it's a reflow oven. Um, but yeah, so now we got the one. This one is the one we do not need. So I'm just gonna set this over here so I don't forget which one's which, and then I will get this done. Okay, so like I said, I haven't shown it on the channel before, so sorry if you're very familiar with solder paste and this is boring to you, but I just, I wanted to show it, uh, kind of showcase it. I, I, I now have a, a dispenser for using this stuff. Uh, however, I haven't plumbed the um, compressed air to it yet, so we're going to do this manually. Uh, it can be kind of hard to push out manually, especially if you don't. Uh, JBC makes a tool that you can kind of push on and it'll push it out. And there's, there's other similar tools to it. Oh, so that way you don't have to try to force out with a syringe. But things to be aware of with solder paste, if you've never used it before, uh, it has to be refrigerated or else it'll go bad. And when you need to use it, it needs to be warm. So that way it will push out. So yeah, for storage, refrigerate it. And then you got to kind of warm it up uh, when you do it. You just kind of stick it in the bag and stick it in hot water. Uh, or I just stick it out uh, in the Florida sun for a couple of minutes and that warms it up enough. Um, but yeah. So you're just going to put a little bit of solder paste on there. And by the way, I'm wearing gloves with the solder paste because it is just little ball. This is leaded solder paste. So it's just little tiny balls of lead mixed with flux. Um, un unlike, you know, this kind of leaded solder, pretty unlikely to ingest any of it because it, you know, it doesn't vaporize. Uh, if you start scraping on it, you could ingest it, but not, not very likely to ingest that. This stuff, uh, when it gets on your skin, it gets stuck in all the little cracks and crevices of your skin. It's, it's pretty, there, there's a good chance of ingestion with this. So I wear gloves when I work with it. You should also keep baby wipes around. Baby wipes make getting this stuff off st easy. So uh, just things to think about there. So we're just going to apply a small amount of solder paste to each of the pads. And that should be more than adequate. The as on these ST uh, EPROMs, I know you can't see it on camera, uh, but there is an ST logo, and that shows you your pin one location. And like I said, that 
where these big brown plane pads are, uh, those are your pin one location on here. So, there we go. And then we're just gonna take hot air. Yeah, I'll move the hot air station so you can kind of see what's going on there. So, I don't know if the camera's really picking it up, but it, it spreads out a lot at first, and then once it melts, it all sucks back in. I'm hoping it doesn't suck into that pad right there. There we go. Yep, it worked right. All right, and that went pretty well. Uh, like I said, it was more than adequate. I accidentally put just too much right there. So I have one small little bridge there, but we're not afraid of bridges. All we have to do, get a little solder wick and clean that up. So I'm gonna let that cool down for just a second so that way it doesn't slide when I go in with the solder wick. Okay, so as you saw, uh, it was not very bad to fix that solder bridge on there. And that's the nice thing about solder paste is, you know, as long as you uh, don't mess it up and put too much solder paste on there in the first place, it, you use it, hit it with some hot air and you're done, or you throw it in a reflow oven and you're done, or hot plate, whatever, and you're done. You don't have to touch it up with a soldering iron or anything. It's, it's nice, quick, and easy. So yeah, that, that went on there pretty well. Um, the, that was all user error on that one bridge we had. I just put a little too much uh, solder paste down, which that's the whole reason for having a dispenser is it gives you that controlled amount on uh, each time you pull the trigger or each time you pump it uh, or foot pedal, however yours works. Mine's got a finger trigger for it. Um, but yeah, so uh, User error, I put a little too much on there at first, but I uh, was able to come back with the solder wick and take it off and no problem. So yeah, when you have a bridge, don't worry about it. Super easy to fix. Just get your solder uh, solder wick up and it'll, it'll clean off. All right, so this is the other one. I'm gonna show you another technique uh, for putting on the, the, for putting on the EEPROM. Uh, so it's just, this one, I don't need to do it, but just figured I'd show it so that way, uh, if some, that way you don't have to go buy this just to do this one job, if that's what you're doing. Uh, so let's see, let's get this glue off here again. Okay, so for our other technique, we have to clean off the pads again. Okay, so again, the pin one position is right here. Uh, I, well, the pad for it's there, but yeah, I'm, it's a bigger point to point to, so. Pin one position there uh, is what I'm trying to say. All right, so let's wet one of these. So that way we have something to hold the EEPROM in place for soldering it. So uh, like I said, we've cleaned off all these pads so they're nice and flat. Now we're gonna come in with the EEPROM and get it soldered into just one pin here. Okay, and now we'll come in and give it a nice drag solder on the other side, so let me rotate this so I can work with it. Remember, circuit board doesn't need to be comfortable, you need to be comfortable else you'll never get anything done. Be gentle with your drag solder. My tip caught it and pushed it a little bit, so let's push this back uh, just a hair. Yeah, come in with confidence. Don't uh, stop midway either. And there we go. That's all there is to it. So quick and easy. Uh, another easy technique. And yes, I, I would say with the eight pin package like this, just doing the drag solder is the easiest way to do it. If you're dealing with a larger package like this uh, or that, you know, I would argue that the, um, the solder paste is quicker and easier, especially once you start getting into uh, large packages like these, the solder paste really uh, comes in and shines. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to show both techniques here. Uh, so that's really it for the, for the repair. We've uh, swapped them back over and this one's gonna go into the e-recycling uh, pile and this one's gonna go back to the mechanics. So let me get this together. 
Okay, well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. Uh, I know it was a pretty basic repair. Um, and uh, yeah, the the drag solder didn't go super smooth. I did push the the EEPROM at first, uh, but you know, oh well. Um, there's no there's no point in trying to fake the videos and be like, oh yeah, look at me, I get things perfect every single time. You know, we adapt and overcome. You have a problem, oh well, let's fix it and, and keep moving. Uh, if you were to stop and reset every time you had a problem doing stuff with electronics, you'd never get stuff done. So, you know, yeah, with the solder paste, we bridged uh, a thing, but that was a good, good opportunity to show how to uh, get rid of that bridge. And yeah, we pushed the EEPROM uh, doing, the, uh, doing the drag solder on there. So I wasn't able to actually finish doing a drag solder. I had to uh, go pu uh, pin to pin instead. Uh, but hey, you know what? Uh, it's, it's good to show, uh, you know, it's good, good to show that we don't always get things right the first time. I, I rather, I rather be honest on the channel and show show my own mistakes than to fake it and make it look like I get things perfect every single time. Uh, anyone that's watched my live streams and stuff knows I won't, you know, I won't fake it. I won't like cover up the part and be like, oh yeah, 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 things are going good, and then swap it out with another board. You know, I'll just overcome the problem. So uh, I hope you guys liked the video, and I'll uh, see you in the next one.